What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is James and today we're out here in northwestern Florida along this absolutely incredible little section of beach kind of hidden out here in the woods. So we're the only ones out here and with me in the cooler right here, I have got some absolutely amazing fresh speckled sea trout that I just caught the other day. So I'm going to do a little catch and cook action for you guys out here today along this gorgeous section of beach. We're going to go for some grilled fish tacos topped off with a zesty mango salsa. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I know I'm excited. I hope you guys are as well. Before we get to that though, just because I cannot stand being out here with all of this in front of us and not having a couple baits in the water, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So while I rig up some rods and throw some shrimp out there, I'm going to roll the footage for you guys from the other day catching this fish that we're about to cook. And then I'll be back with you guys in a few minutes and we will get to the absolutely delicious portion of this video. There's one. That feels like a good fish. Oh yeah. Oh, redfish. Nice, nice little redfish too, man. Ooh, nice little red, man. Look at the color on that guy. Gold, just beautiful little fish. I think this guy's probably slot. I don't have any ice with me, unfortunately, because I didn't really plan on uh, keeping anything, but let's at least get a measure on this guy just for fun, huh? All right, so this fish is 23 inches on the dot, so that is a beautiful little slot redfish, but we are gonna put him back. Really got that thing in there, didn't you? Cool, on the board. There it is. Yes. Nice spec, man. Nice freaking spec. All right, guys, there is a look at that speckled trout that we just caught. I'm stoked, man. This is actually the first speck that I've ever managed to get into the boat. I've uh, caught a couple now, and uh, I've never managed to actually get them up into the boat. They always pop off right before I can measure them. Let's see uh, what we're looking at here. Pretty decent size for first one. So he's about, about 16, 16 and a half, somewhere in there. So that's not bad, man. That's pretty sick. There he is. Don't go around that pole. Oh, you went around that pole, didn't you? Oh, of course you did. Oh, you get out of there. Got him. That's a nice fat one too. Here's a look at that second little speckle trout we got. It looks like we finally got onto a good uh, good little afternoon, evening bite out here, man. That's another nice one. I'm gonna get that guy on the bumper real quick, see how big he is, and then we'll set him free. Got him on the uh, live target mullet and the new uh, favorite fishing, Old Salty 3000 size combo. That one is about 15 and a half, about an inch shorter than that first one we got. Nice. All right, guys, there is one last look at that speckled trout. Set him free. See you later. All right, guys, I got both my lines thrown out with some fresh raw shrimp on. Hopefully those will get hit, but in the, uh... oh, we are, we're getting hit right now. What, what, no. Dude, what on earth? <laughs> this is crazy, what? Well, dude, that's a good one too. 
Dude, I bet that's a good red. It's either a good red or it's a big stick. <laughs> Dude, that is crazy. Dude, that's a good one, man. That is a good one. I think we're over my other line here. Oh. Totally unprepared for this. Literally just threw these out. <laughs> oh, this is a good one, dude. What do we got here, man? Oh. Big ugly catfish, I think. I think it's a big ugly sail cat, dude. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude, look at that guy. That is an ugly one, man. Holy cow. <laughs> what the heck, dude? That was crazy. I literally sat down to fill my intro. I just threw that out. I was not expecting to eat a fish. And you know, it's not like, it's not a good fish. It's just a catfish. But dude, that was honestly pretty tight. Come on, buddy. I don't want to get barbed today. Don't make me pick you up. There he goes. There he goes. Oh! <laughs> you gotta go that way. You gotta go that way. There he goes. There he goes. <laughs> I've never been so excited about a freaking catfish in my life. That was amazing. All right, so we're gonna dig this fire pit right here. I'm choosing this spot just because it's away from all of the dry stuff. And that's a really important thing you guys need to take note of if you're doing something like this is all of this dry stuff is gonna catch on fire super easy. That's how you start forest fires and you hear about all these horrible fires burning people's homes down and all that kind of stuff. So it's just important to make sure if you're going to do like a primitive uh, kind of fire pit like this anywhere, not even just on the beach, especially with lots of cover though that you guys are, are being cautious of where it is so we're gonna dig down right here and uh, get that out of the way and i'm gonna get like a nice deep fire pit going here that way we can build in the bottom of it and hopefully it'll be wind protected and then i can also use um, all of this sand that i'm bringing up here and we can kind of build like a, a wind wall around the top of this thing and it should help us out tremendously i would think Ooh, look at this. We got a treasure trove of firewood over here. Oh, this is perfect. So this stuff here is this nice dry driftwood that's been sitting up here away from the water for a long period of, this, of uh, time. So this stuff is super dry as opposed to this stuff down here. So this is gonna work great for us. Good, so I'm gonna start getting some of this kindling down uh, in the bottom of our fire pit. And then um, we'll get the fire going. Hopefully we can use uh, some of like this bigger stuff here to get that fire built up. And then um, the other thing that I need to do is I need to build like a, a rack over the top of this because I've got a, um, a cooking pan right here that we're gonna use to actually cook our food on. So I'll have to figure that out, but let's at least get the fire going first. And then once the fire is going good and strong, we can build a little rack over the top of it so we can put the pan on. get some of this dry stuff down there in the bottom of our fire pit here and we'll make a nice little uh like nice little kind of mesh of this dried kindling oh yeah that stuff is just bone dry on the inside that's gonna be perfect all right let's get this fire going guys so we're gonna be using the uh, all-weather fire starters from bigfoot bushcraft and these are pretty sweet man so what these are is they are a waterproof fire starter so you can actually drop this in the water and it will still start so all we have to do here is we'll start bending this back and forth to kind of loosen those fibers up just like that and then once they're nice and loose we can start kind of working it in a circular pattern and you can see those uh those fibers start opening up so we're gonna rub it together here and get it all loosened up 
And then uh, the next piece of the puzzle here is the ferro rod. And if you guys don't know what a ferro rod is, essentially this is a primitive type of fire starter. So you just strike this thing and it creates sparks. And that's what we're gonna use to light this. And then I'm gonna tuck that right down inside our kindling and we'll get that fire going and that should uh, be good to cook on. All right, there it goes. All right, we're starting to get smoke, guys. We're starting to get fire. This is good. guys so we've got that fire going now it's going real good we've got a great amount of heat coming out i need to figure out how to uh, make a little rack over the top of this fire pit for this thing to sit on and uh, what i kind of came up with is i've got a couple of these uh, longer sticks here so i'm thinking what we can probably do is uh stick this in there just like that and then uh let's see i had another one around here somewhere i might have thrown it in the fire let's see if we can Maybe use this guy right here, huh? Here we go. Let's dig that down to where uh, those are mostly level. Okay, not quite. Let's, uh, actually, let's roll that. There we go. That'll fix the problem. Oh, yeah. There we go. Perfect. All right. Sweet. Now, if I could quit dropping sand in the fire pit, I think we'd be all set. So we've got that rack on there now. So we should be um, pretty much ready to start cooking. So I'm going to start um, cutting up our ingredients. Um, the salsa is going to need to sit for probably about 10 minutes just to get those juices all kind of blended together and be really good. So I'm gonna cut up our veggies and our fruit. I'm gonna make the salsa first. And then uh, once that salsa is done and we can let it sit for a few minutes, then I can get our fish going on our hot pan. And by then that fire should have that pan nice and hot and we should be all set. This is gonna be a piece of cake and it's gonna be absolutely freaking delicious, dude. So I'm gonna start out nice and easy here. I'm um, just chopping up some cilantro real quick. Hopefully the wind doesn't take it away from me. I'm a cilantro guy. Some people think it tastes like soap. Both my parents hate it, but somehow I love it. It is delicious. Go for that jalapeno next. I'm only gonna put probably about half of this thing in there. And I like things spicy, guys. I'm a spicy guy, so I'm gonna leave the uh, leave the seeds in there, and we're just gonna just kind of coarsely chop this. It doesn't have to be anything too special. All right, little bit of red onion. I'm only gonna go just a little bit with that jalapeno. I don't want it to be just like super freaking hot, you know. I want to be able to enjoy it just a little bit. But you gotta use red onion for this, guys. Yellow onion is just fine. Sweet onion. It's okay, white onion's pretty boring, but we want this to be uh, good and tasty, have a little bit of punch to it. So we're gonna use that beautiful red onion. The last step, well, not the last step, the uh, like the third to last step for this salsa is gonna be that mango right there. That's gonna give it a nice sweetness. It's gonna pair with that jalapeno and that onion really well. The only problem is, is I have no idea how to cut up a mango. I know there's like a giant like flat pit right in the middle of it. So I think what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna do it kind of like an avocado, sort of maybe. That's uh, yeah, wow, okay. And straight in the bowl. Quarter the lime, just like that. Sweet, and then we can squeeze some of this lime juice right in there. I'm gonna use uh, two, two of these quarters right now, and then I'm gonna use the other two to drizzle over our fish. Let's get just a little bit of salt in there. And then we're gonna give that a nice stir. And that's looking super good. That's gonna be delicious on these fish tacos. This is a, a recipe that I've done before for fish and it comes out so good and it's just so simple. So give that a nice stir there. You guys can already see how those uh, ingredients are coming together super nice. 
and it's good and juicy now but you want to let this sit for a few minutes to really let those juices kind of absorb into everything give that a little taste make sure it's salty enough mm. holy cow dude that is delicious all right so i've got some butter here oh yeah oh yeah buddy this is gonna be so good perfect oh oh no <laughs> dude i knew that was gonna happen too i freaking knew it that's okay we got our fire going let's we gotta go find another stick real quick guys these ought to do just fine i'm gonna grab a few just in case we need a, some kind of backup that'll work <laughs> All right, cool, our fire's still going. So I'm gonna try a method with this that I just thought of. Let's get this wet. There we go. Let's get that nice and wet. That way, hopefully it doesn't get hot as quick and uh, we might get a little bit more time out of it maybe. Add just a little bit of oil into the butter and that should do just fine. And we're ready to put on our fish. That pan's nice and hot now. It's been going for probably about 20 minutes while I was making the salsa. So we should be all set. And a little bit of Old Bay seasoning. This stuff is so good, guys. I'm gonna flip these guys. It's been about, uh, I don't know, maybe like seven, eight minutes. So, oh yeah, that's uh, that's looking real good. All right, make sure we don't got no sand on our hands here. And let's take a look at this fish. Oh, it's hot, oh, it's hot, oh, oh, it's hot. It looks done though. Oh, that looks delicious. All right, so we're gonna break some of this fish up onto our tacos. I think, I think we're gonna actually have a lot more than three tacos here, but that's fine. I can eat four, maybe five, we'll see. I freaking love fish, guys. I love it, love it, love it, love it. Look how crispy and amazing that is. Got all those spices on there. Mm. Little bit of sand. Little bit of sand on there, but it's okay. So usually I make my own sauce for this, but I was walking through Walmart before coming down here and I saw the uh, Taco Bell Creamy Baja sauce. I freaking love Taco Bell, guys, if you didn't know that, so I had to get it, had to. I couldn't just walk past Taco Bell creamy Baja sauce and not buy it when we're going to make fish tacos on the beach. I mean, come on. So we're going to put a little bit of that or a lot of it on there. A lot of it's fine. It'll be good. There we go. And now for our homemade zesty mango salsa. I guess it's kind of like a, like a sweet and spicy because we got the jalapenos and the red onion mixed with like the uh the sweetness of the mango and we got cilantro that's not really sweet but it's good and i'm gonna add just a little bit of lettuce if i can open it oh look it just fell in that is perfect we just got the fish off it like two minutes ago and it just fell in that's awesome all right, we're gonna put just a little bit of shredded lettuce on. Usually with fish tacos, you do uh, you do shredded cabbage, but I'm not really feeling the cabbage for this recipe. It seems more like a like a lettuce recipe. So we're gonna do the lettuce. So last step here, we're gonna take the last two lime wedges and just get that juice all over these tacos. Oh. Guys, these look so freaking good. Look at those, dude. They look absolutely amazing. Like, I cannot get over how good this turned out. All right, let's give these bad boys a try. Mm. Oh my God. That is so freaking good. If you guys are looking for a good uh, fish taco recipe, highly recommend doing this. That, um, that like savory yet sweet salsa with just like a little bit of kick to it from those jalapenos, 
it pairs so well with the the, uh, the white flaky flesh of like sea trout. Um, you can even use like sheep's head, redfish, any of those kinds of fish that you would typically make fish tacos out of. Um, this is a like killer recipe, dude, and it's so simple. It turned out so good. You can cook it out here on the beach. It's absolutely amazing. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would have done different has probably been a little bit more careful about putting sand on my plate and on the food, but it's all right, a little bit of sand just adds some texture to it. It's amazing. All right, so those are absolutely delicious. I'm gonna finish eating those in just a second, but before I do, I'm gonna get this bite down so I can talk. Before I do, I wanna to talk to you guys for just a second about um, a product that I used here today to make this meal possible to share with you guys and that is the uh the fire plug fire starter kit from bigfoot bushcraft um these things are awesome you guys saw how well they worked um essentially all it is it is um just these little fire plugs and you guys saw how i did it you break them in half or not break them all the way fully through but you bend them back and forth till they get nice and soft and then you kind of rub them together until it starts uh puffing up um, and then it's got a propellant in there that when struck with the ferro rod and you just strike it it creates a spark when that spark hits the propellant that's in the cotton on this it will combust and you guys can use these in place of a lighter now the cool thing about that is is a lighter is not always going to be the most reliable tool it is a good tool to have but it's not something that you can always depend on so i'm going to show you why right now here's the thing about a lighter okay if you guys take a look here so this lighter is working let me show you guys that right now this lighter is a good working lighter but what happens when you're out here hiking, maybe you're out here fishing, you trip and fall in the water and then you end up in a survival situation where you need a lighter. Look at that. That is uh, pretty much trash now. That's not gonna do anything for you for at least several hours until it dries out. But the beauty of these fire plugs right here made by Bigfoot Bushcraft is, check this out guys, this is freaking crazy. You're not gonna believe this. Watch. I'm gonna dunk that in the water, okay? Now, this is soaking wet. You guys just saw me dunk it in the water. I'm gonna show you guys right now without cutting the clip, actually. Let's do it without cutting the clip so you know I'm not screwing with you. Okay, soaking wet, not gonna cut the clip at all. Let's open this up. Work it around, just like that. And I'm gonna set this uh, set it down right here and i'm going to kind of block it from the wind check this out guys boom look at that i did not cut the clip you guys saw that happen you know that i'm not screwing with you that fire starter was just in the water, salt water, soaking wet, and it is now burning just fine. So this is an awesome survival tool. Um, you can get the kit with the fire plugs. This is the larger bag. They sell several different size bags, but these are waterproof. You can also see that they're windproof. We've got probably about a 15 mile an hour wind coming out of the east right now. And uh, the wind, the water, nothing is affecting those fire plugs. Um, you can also get the tin. Um, this is just a nice little tin that you can keep a couple of these things in so you don't have to carry the entire bag around with you everywhere you go. So if you're an ultralight backpacker or something like that, get the tin. And then you can also get the ferro rod and uh, you also get the striker. All you have to do is strike that on the ferro rod and it's gonna create that spark that's going to ignite your fire starters. And they're also nice enough to send you a second striker with a second leash on there as well as this nice little bag that you can keep that in so it doesn't get wet, get rusty and all that kind of stuff while it's in your bag. So guys, head over to Bigfoot Bushcraft's website. I will leave a link for you down in the description as well as an exclusive CKW Outdoors promotion code. You will get a percentage off the already incredibly cheap price of this. And it is an absolutely incredible survival tool to have in your bag when you're out fishing, hiking, camping whatever the case is you never know what's going to happen so that's all i got to say about that guys go check them out i'm going to finish eating my lunch and before i do check that out guys that thing is still freaking burning i've been talking for five minutes now it's probably been about three since i lit that and it's still going soaking wet with the wind blowing on it it's still burning just fine i could start another fire with that it's going to burn for another several minutes guys 
really go check them out. I'm gonna finish my tacos now because they are delicious and they are getting cold. That was absolutely delicious, man. That was so freaking good. I cannot believe how well that turned out. And also, I'm just gonna show you guys. So it, it's taken me about five minutes to uh, finish my meal. Check this out. That fire starter is still freaking burning. Soaking wet. You guys saw me dunk it in the water. Soaking wet. Windy as heck out here. It's like 15 mile an hour wind. And that freaking fire starter is still burning. Like it's, it's a good product guys. And we were able to uh, use it to start a fire in these windy conditions, keep the fire going and cook delicious fish tacos with that nice sweet and sour, sweet and hot, hot and sweet. Is that the term? Sweet and spicy. Sweet and spicy mango jalapeno sauce on top. I mean, it doesn't get better than this, guys. This is an absolutely amazing day. And now I'm gonna get packed up. Um, one important thing that I do wanna make note of is uh, this right here, guys, this fire pit. We're gonna take all of this sand, push it back in there, fill it in. That way there is no trace that we were ever here. We've got these pristine beaches out here, guys, and it's very important to make sure we help keep them that way. So I'm gonna fill that fire pit back in. I'm gonna get packed up and then I'm actually gonna go fishing again. So we're gonna take our surf rods and I'm actually gonna go out to the Gulf side out on Pensacola Beach, the Pompano we're running now. It's been getting real hot and with the conditions today, I think it's gonna be the perfect bite out there. So I'm gonna go meet up with a buddy, hopefully catch the Pompano. Maybe that'll turn into another video for you guys to watch and enjoy. And until then, thank you guys so much for joining me on this adventure here today, watching and enjoying this video and just overall supporting the channel. Thank you guys so much and I look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. Okay, just kidding apparently guys. Video is not quite over yet. I don't even have my chest strap on anymore. Here, let's just do this. Put that right there, huh? Kind of, sort of, maybe. <laughs> so I was, uh, I got everything packed up, right? And I was reeling this rod in, and all of a sudden something whacked it. I think it's probably just a catfish, but let's get it in and find out. We got one more fish for the video, guys. Oh yeah, it's just a little catfish. There he is. Just a little catfish. <laughs> all right, guys, there's one more fish for you to close the video out just for fun. It's just a catfish, nothing too, uh, Nothing too special, but hey, we're catching fish. We're eating fish tacos. It's a good freaking day, guys. Anyway, thank you again so much for uh, coming along on this adventure with me, catching a couple fish, eating some fish tacos. It was a blast, and I'll see you guys on the next one.